Markets continue to surge higher last week. Very, very strong rally as we continue to build upon the momentum gained from the week prior. Of course, to start August out, we saw a massive spike in volatility, a ton of selling to kick the week or to kick the month off, I should say. But already the V-shaped recovery all but uh, all but completed at this point. I think for the month of August, we are actually up and just a few percentage points now away from Reclaiming some all-time highs, at least uh, yeah, at least in the S&P 500. So markets, it just, the chaos continues, but at the end of the day, not too far away from where we thought we would be at this point in time. I would say the only thing more chaotic right now than markets are the uh, macro data underpinning the moves and the swings that we're seeing in markets. At the beginning of this month, we saw unemployment surge higher, triggering the SAM rule. All the perma bears, the market alarmists, or macro alarmists, they all came out saying, ah, see, recession, recession. We then had CPI come out, again, pushing lower, which I got to admit, if all I had in isolation was unemployment and CPI both doing what they do this month, I'd be like, yeah, maybe this is the slowdown, the end of the cycle. But... As we finished the week off, we saw retail sales come in super strong. Earlier, we saw jobless claims fall off two weeks in a row. We're seeing things like travel surge higher, really strong ticket sales for, for airlines. So we have it's like, it's like a tale of two data, right? We have like unemployment CPI, generally speaking, really good leading indicators, both showing oh, this might be the end of the cycle. But then we see things just generally aligned with growth, showing, wow, this is a booming economy. So what gives? How do we figure this out? Well, that's what we're going to figure out in this update. That's exactly why you're here. Why? Because we're just not looking at charts, trying to come up with whatever we want to fit with our narrative. We're going to dig deep into the data, into the theory, create simulation, create models to understand where we're at in this macro cycle. If you've been following me, you know, I still think we're at the beginning stages in the early innings of this macro cycle of this business cycle. That's the argument I will be making. But admittedly, I need to explain why is it that we saw this sudden shot higher in unemployment? Why is it that we're seeing CPI push lower? So we're going to do that, like I said, with theory, and we're going to run some simulations on the macro economy to see if we can get play out exactly what it is that we've seen recently in this past month and, and try and explain what's actually going on. Before we do that, though, if you're new here, make sure you get subscribed, hit that notification bell. And if you find this video particularly helpful on the way out, give it a thumbs up. It would be much appreciated. And if you're watching this on X, follow me there as well. Here's my explanation for why it is that we're seeing what we're seeing. I'll just kind of lay it out and then we'll rebuild up from the ground up the theory and ultimately simulate the macro economy to, to see if, if what it is that my theory is actually playing out. My theory is that starting in late 2020 or 2022, early 2023, we saw a massive increase in fiscal spending. This saved the day from what looked to be like almost a, a certain recession in 2022, exactly as we expected. And we saw this big boom into 2023, much better than expected growth, all that good sort of stuff that we saw play out in 2023. And so we had that initial push on the back of that, and this usually happens after major fiscal expansions, we saw we saw non-farm business sector labor productivity take off. And again, as you can see, after uh, after recessionary periods where you get the automatic stabilizers to kick in, you get a big surge in labor productivity. We saw this after the uh, late 70s, early 80s recession, the 91 recession, the dot-com, post-great financial crisis, COVID. And then we had, of course, we didn't have a recession in 2022, but we had spending like we had a recession in 2022, which kicks labor productivity off in high gear. And so to me, this is one factor that we need to consider right now that's unique, that's not generally like most cycles. We did have this massive productivity boost, again, off the back of big fiscal. The other thing we saw that I think also helps explain the unemployment rate is we've seen labor participation tick higher, and we continue to see things like immigration and, and the recent surge in immigration also adding more overall to the labor pool. So my argument is that we saw an increase in productivity plus an increase in the overall pool and the labor force, and those two things combined are what can give you continued growth expansion of of the macro economy while also seeing employment push lower 
and CPI pushed lower as well. Now, to prove this out, so again, we saw employment push higher, CPI push lower, and growth expand over the last few months. And to really prove this, we're going to jump into what is now called Ravel, formerly Minsky, which is a system dynamics program where we can piece together the entire macro economy and then simulate various outcomes to see if our theories make sense and if they can be validated both empirically like we already have in the data and theoretically in a simulation. I'm using Ty over at uh, Relearning Economics by what he calls his national model to go ahead and run the simulation and kind of prove the few points that we want to look at. If you want more details on how this whole thing is constructed, go ahead and check out the video that I will link in the description below. He gives about a 30, 40 minute video about his entire model in more detail. But suffice to say, this is all set up in a manner that is consistent with kind of a heterodox MMT type approach. And what we can do here is we can simulate, like I just said, the macro economy, and then play with a few uh, play with a few shocks to introduce the sort of uh, sort of things that we think actually did play out in the past few uh, in the past few years and see if we can get the outcome that in fact we see in the data which is employment spiking i'm sorry unemployment spiking inflation pushing uh, inflation pushing lower while we maintain all right so what i'm going to do is i'm going to jump into the main interface here and again if you want to understand everything that's going on with this entire model check out Ty's video but suffice to say what, what this model is actually doing is it's simulating the macro economy in a manner in which is very consistent to the way that the, the macro economy has played out over the last 20 or 30 years. Okay, so that's effectively how this thing is set up. And what we're going to do is we're going to let this play out for a few cycles here to kind of get a baseline for what the various cycles look like. And really what we want to pay attention to are the unemployment rate in the top right and the inflation rate in the top right. We also want to take a look at the public and private debt ratios as they grow over time to show that we have growth. You can see GDP, GDI, and then also money supply on the left there to show that we're getting an expanding economy that has all the elements of endogenous expansion and, and public expansion, public spending expansion that you would expect in a macro economy. And then eventually, once this uh, once these uh, cycles settle and get to kind of a, a bit of a, a more consistent cyclicality, what we're going to do is we're going to introduce the shocks that we talked about, right? We're going to introduce a productivity shock where productivity gets stronger, and we're going to introduce an increase to the growth rate for employment to see if after we introduce those two changes that we saw have happened empirically, if we can get in this macro simulation, the output that we're actually seeing, right? So what we want is we want growth to, generally speaking, continue on while we get a sudden increase in the unemployment rate and a decrease in the inflation rate. So in other words, usually you get an increase in the employment rate and, or I'm sorry, an increase in the unemployment rate and a decrease in the inflationary rate right as you're about to go into a recession, but can we get those things to occur, but not actually enter a recession? So in just a second, I'm gonna introduce those two shocks, essentially in the same spot in the macro economy that we were in up to just a few months ago. And again, see, will the unemployment rate pop and will the inflation rate drop to a lower level? So let's go ahead and do this. We're gonna go ahead and institute that productivity shock. So again, we're becoming more productive and we're gonna increase the population rate as well. And we'll continue to let this model grind forward here in time. And lo and behold, we end up seeing exactly what we'd expect. We see a big jump in unemployment and we see this push lower in the inflation rate. We'll go ahead and let this play out for a couple more cycles here. But what's happening here to kind of understand this theory as it continues to play out is it, it, it kind of makes intuitive sense. If productivity pushes higher, that means the need to bring on more workers to get more output decreases, right? You just are able to be more productive with what it is that you have, and therefore you just don't need to pull on employment the way that you do when production is not increasing. And then on top of that, when the when the output when the output continues to push higher and your economy is just more productive as a whole, that helps inflation stay abated. So admittedly, a couple months ago, I thought, hey, maybe inflation might start taking off. But when we simulate the macroeconomy in this manner, 
we end up seeing, yeah, you can actually get lower inflation by higher productivity, and you can start to see what we'll kind of call the frequency of unemployment increase, right? And you get this sudden spike momentarily of a higher unemployment rate, a higher amplitude of unemployment before you begin to start to see unemployment settle down, still at a higher frequency, but a compression of that amplitude, and inflation stay, generally speaking, lower for that moment in time, while we continue to still see money supply grow, GDP grow, overall private debt and public debt continues to expand. And so we end up explaining exactly what it is that we saw in reality when we're willing to take the time to build out the simulation, to think through the theory, and to actually play it out empirically, we see that we get exactly what it is that we see in the data to play out. And so going back to the data then, how do we explain what it is that we see? I think it is really through the increase in labor participation, probably additional immigration, adding to the overall pool of workers. On top of that, this massive push higher in labor productivity that was caused by the initial surge in additional government spending. Those are all the sort of things that you would expect to see that would allow growth to continued, but inflation push lower and unemployment push higher. So I would argue the main takeaway here is never take any individual macro data series in isolation. You have to understand it in terms of the whole, in terms of the entirety of the system, in terms of what the system state is at that current time and everything leading up to that moment in time and then what plays out after that. And the only way you can do that is taking the time to build up the necessary tools to do things like system dynamic simulation of macroeconomy by building up various models to show you where you're at in that system state, in that dimensional space that is the broader cycle, business cycle of the macro economy. So my, my final statement on this is, look, I'm believing the retail sales, I'm believing jobless claims, I'm believing travel, I'm believing the sort of data right now that shows that we are in an expansion of growth because we can easily explain why it is that we're seeing things like the unemployment rate and CPI do what they're doing in the face of what is clearly an expanding and growing macro economy. So that's what I have for tonight. Look, if you are an active trader, active investor, make sure you head on over to AppliedMMT.com. And if you like the sort of stuff that we're doing and you're an institution or a large money manager, we've added a new tab and we'd love to talk to you. We're building out some very cool new tools and we'd love to, uh, love to see if there's a way that we could partner. So check that out as well. Drop your contact information there. All right. That is all I have for this update. Until next time, good trading, everyone, and we'll talk to you then. Bye-bye.